Report from News in Medicine. I'm your host, Dr. Moshe Lewis. We love featuring our showcase, and today we've got no other than Chaz Shepard, a legend in and of itself. Chaz, our experience goes way back, but talk to us about how you first got interested in music, and then we'll get to the acting. Okay, I didn't know I was a legend, but uh, I'll take that. Okay, uh, music starts with me as a toddler. Music starts, according to my mother, with me going around uh, the house, uh, getting to the kitchen, taking out some pots, and banging them together, imitating church, saying, Lord, 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 Lord. And that's where it starts, and it just is a whole uh, story from there as far as the, all of the moments of development, of interest, of riding on the trolley and the train and the bus to school, listening to Mississippi Mass Choir and James Moore, oh. Take Six. Yes. You know, uh, I mean, you just you just named Bobby McFerrin. Um, we were all over the place. Uh, I was also singing the entire time on the way to school and from school. Wow. But uh, maybe, you know, there, there are some crazy folk in Philly, so maybe they thought I was too crazy to ask me to shut up. <laughs> but I sang the whole time, so I was actually having vocal classes on the train, the bus, the trolley, and on my bike. Mm -hmm. uh, still to this day, if I'm in Philly, if I'm at home, I'm on my bike. Uh, my neighbor, Miss Addie, she was 97 when she died. She used to sit on the porch and say, that's your BMW right there, that bike. <laughs> So I'd ride on a bike and jam. So it's a whole natural progression sure. of music. The ear came from what I listened to. Uh, the experience and the practice was in the church um, the whole time. Even up to this day, I'm still Amen. involved over at West Angeles. Um, but you know, I started in the church that only had an organ and the drums. Right. Uh, I, I didn't see a band in the church till I came to Los Angeles. Right. Uh, it went over to West Angeles. Well, actually first AME first. That, and then the next Sunday was West Angeles. First time I seen an entire band. Right. And then got into the choir and of course praise and worship and your choir rehearsals yes. is where that ear develops, you know what I mean? And that basic like three part that. harmony and inflections yes. under under guys who we now know as Kirk Carr and yes. Jason yeah. White, but they were our choir directors right. then. Yeah. Yeah. You know? So yeah, yeah, Judy McAllister all day. Yeah. But she was in the praise and worship side, yes. which which was considered a different section of the service. So we mm -hmm. start off with that Judy McAllister right. blo just blow up. Right. You know what I mean? Just the service is about to go crazy from there. And then you would have her do that and lead us there, her and the praise team, and it was just like an explosion. And then you'd have this, this the short guy get up on the director's box with his robe and direct the craziness out of the choir, then right. he'd turn around and direct you and the audience. And you know, who Come knew back. that he would turn into Kurt Carr, you know? And to hear before that, sure. Daryl Coley was yes. the director of the choir yes, as well in those days. So yeah, yeah. yeah no. That church life is where it's at, man. Wonderful pedigree. Now, mm -hmm. when did you get your big break in acting, and what was that first role? Um, big break. I, I still think I haven't had the big break. When I say break, I mean that thing that gets you over the hump mm -hmm. to where you are now in a, a place of just floating and flourishing and blossoming in the business. Sure. But, uh, of course, I've just had nothing but breaks throughout, but I won't say the big break yet. Um, maybe... The first thing that got it moving on a high scale was me doing a show called Sinbad. Mm -hmm. And this was in about 93. Right. Uh, I was playing Sinbad's son, and um, there was Sinbad, there was Layla Rashan, yeah. who at that time was just a, a queen in the commercial uh, industry, uh, and soon to be known very well for Boomerang as well. Yeah. There was a Spanish girl who my mother and I took out to, to, to lunch in, on our break. And she was saying, I'm doing well in Mexico. She could barely speak English. She could barely understand her. She was just hoping that she would be able to do well in the States one day. And she became Selma Hayek. Sure. Uh, you know, and, and, sure. and so when I ran into her in the Beverly Center one day, I said, I guess it worked out for you. Huh? <laughs> exactly. I, guess it, I guess you're doing a little well in the States. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Yeah, much. right, right. You know what I'm saying? And if you're not doing well no more, your husband is. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> you know. So, yeah. So, think about who That's you take right. out to lunch. Um, mm -hmm. What are some of the roles that you've played, some of the shows you've been on? Uh, well, it's 30 years worth. Yes. Um, most, most of them are significant shows and movies to our culture. Uh, so uh, I, I almost wouldn't know where to start. Um, but if we do film, mostly it was television uh, for me. Yeah. Um, theater film was set it off. Sure. Um, but uh, a favorite of folks is The, the Temptations. Yes. Uh, that's a favorite of which I 
almost didn't get I got because I left my radio in the audition room by accident. Okay, tell us and about that. And that's how I got that. Yeah, so I went in. I went in for the role of Otis. Okay. They enjoyed me. Suzanne DePass is sitting right there. Alan yeah. Arkush, the director. And it's, ah, oh, you're just too young. You're just yeah. too young. You know, it's like, oh, man, okay, well, thank you all so much. And part of the audition was you had to bring a radio in. Um, and, and just, you know, just so they can just see you move a little bit, just sure. to see if you at least could keep rhythm, right. you know, and, and sing a little bit or whatever. And, uh, and I left the room, but I left my radio. So, right, I knocked us up. Sorry, so I left the radio. They said, oh, that's right. You, you didn't sing or do anything. I mean, I'm like, well, it's pointless, you know what I mean? Right. <laughs> I said, no, still do something. Just do something. Just something. And I did my, you know, temps and my, my little thing. And, and <laughs> then girl. I saw uh, them look at each other. And, and uh, I think it was she or he that said, well, there's a whoa that we were, we were thinking about putting that we took out. We're thinking about putting back in, mm -hmm. and uh, I think you were right for that. They told me that right there. Sure. Normally, that's not the the norm of how the audition right. process goes, and so that's how I got the Temptations by leaving my radio, sure. and uh, and wound <laughs> up in tip. it way more than I was supposed to because they were enjoying my take on it because I was right. the only character of the group where there was no 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 reference mm. or I hadn't met Otis yet. All the other guys got to speak with him. Wow. Okay. Uh, the character I played was nowhere to be found. So I had to just get what I was getting mm. from the script and they were loving it. It was gelling. Sure. And so I wound up in there a bit longer. So that was one. But plenty of things. Steve Harvey's a big, big yes. part of of my um my my start on TV because the Sinbad show I didn't wind up airing mm. on. Okay. Ray J replaced me. Okay, and so, so now yeah, that explains now, it. Yeah, I'll remind him. I'll see him next month. But uh, he replaced <laughs> me um, because they were just wondering if I was too old and blah, 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 blah. And so uh, Steve Harvey's first show, Me and the Boys, was the first okay. that aired right. uh, where I played his son and, you know, all of that stuff. And we went on. And then later, he's the one in 2010 who gave me the shine on my music career sure. uh, because he had the number one morning show at that time between him and Tom Joyner going back and forth. Right. Uh, and so he broke me that way. It's, 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 it's plenty, plenty things. Mo, uh, Moesha, uh, yes. uh, the Parkers, and Seventh Heaven for two years. Sure. A, lot of, a lot of cool stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. Talk to us about some of the movie roles. I know you recently did a project with Kirk Franklin. Yeah, yes. I did uh, Kirk Franklin's first Christmas movie, which was also Lifetime's first faith-based right. uh, uh, Christmas movie. So it's called Kirk Franklin's A Gospel Christmas. And... Uh, he had reminded me that I had auditioned for him for a show he was doing many years before. I totally forgot about that. Right. And so he was like, we finally get to, to do it. Right. And nice. so we did, and, um, and, and it was fantastic. Got some, some good reviews. People enjoyed it. Um, lifetime movie style. Sure. Uh, and most recently playing Marvin Sapp in the Marvin Sapp um, biopic for TV One. Awesome. Yeah. If people want to find you, where can they find you? I'm going to let them listen to you. Oh, they will find me. So you can find me on all of your streaming platforms musically. We have that record that Steve Harvey broke uh, for me in uh, 2010. Uh, something that just has a bop on it that was just released uh, this summer. Sure. But coming March 23rd is uh, my third album, um, and that is a strong album, strong songs. Sure. Uh, classic style, I believe, in uh, doing things that, that are timeless um, and presentations that are timeless. Um, and not just in the moment, and we're going to have a bunch of that, one of which I'll perform here, but we'll have a bunch of that on that album. Sure. That's March 23rd. Uh, also on March 23rd, I will be at the Sunrose okay. on Sunset Boulevard, and uh, we will be having uh, the album release jam, yeah. night of just some ridiculous music. We're going to be there. The following last... week, I will be doing a jazz show there as well. Sure. So that that's one place that you can actually come and sit in an intimate room, live, grand piano, full band, horns, just kill it. Absolutely. We're having a good time. We'll be there if you let us. Thank you, man. Yeah, sure. come on in the room. Well, That's what you say in church. You say, come on in the room. <laughs> come on in the room, Doc. <laughs> without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, Chad Shepard. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Let's make this moment unerasable for you. You're my incredible. Hey, for you. You're my You're my 
what made me write the song was there's an artist named Raheem Devine who, while we were on tour doing a show around the country, um, found out about my producing ability. I would be in the dressing room producing. I'd be at the hotel producing. And he said, man, you know, he twists his mouth when he's talking. He's like, yo, man, I need a, I need like a, a prince like Joe. Need you give me like a print, like a prince feel. And I said, oh, all right, all right, all right. So I went up that night in my hotel room while everybody else was chilling in the lobby. And I started on a prince like track, something with the, the essence of it. And uh, I finished the track and I sent it to Raheem. And we're moving around, but he never said anything about it. Now he recorded to another track that I did but not to that one. He never mentioned it. He ne and I'm listening, and I'm really like, I'm like, yo, this joint's fire. I'm feeling this. And the more he didn't say nothing, the more I hoped he wouldn't. <laughs> and so uh, one day I'm going, I'm in New York, and I'm taking the train down to the Village Underground. The Village Underground was the hottest open mic in the country at the time. And so I'm going down there on a Sunday night, and I'm playing that track, and it, it just starts downloading. You know, it just started downloading. And so it was downloading on the way there. Got there, jammed out with everybody. And the rest downloaded on the way back. You know, and it came. Here's my love, come feel my touch. And just that whole essence. And, uh, and then I recorded it. And boom. And he still ain't asked about it. <laughs> <laughs> so it will be on the album. March 23rd. Who are some of the artists that you look up to and that you try to emulate or that really inspire you in music? Uh, never emulate, but be inspired by. Mm -hmm. Because we already got them. Right. We already have them. And so they've already mastered them. Right, right. You know, so, um, but, but uh, I like to capture some of the stylings of, depending on that line, depending on that word, sure. whatever. Uh, uh, in the song, um, a great number of artists um, who I think musically are most soul-wise, the soul that I'm most connected to musically is Donny Hathaway. Yeah. Uh, and uh, then we go right into church. And, right. Uh, a favorite uh, is James Moore. Uh, mm -hmm. Goodness, there's, there are many. It's kind of hard to do that in the gospel world. Right. Because right. it's coming from all over the place. Uh, you know, I may just hold a particular note uh, if I'm doing a gospel song, uh, like Daryl Coley would, but maybe just that note. Right. You see what I'm right. saying? Maybe right. just that particular uh, vowel rounding that he may have done. Uh, there are many women. I mean, Rosetta Tharp, mm. you know, um, from, 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 she's like the G. Right. She's, she's, yeah. she's the queen. Yeah. You know what I mean? Prince would bow down to Rosetta. <laughs> um, you know, um, we have uh, Raphael Sadiq. Yes. Um, who has certain stylings that remind me of young Michael Jackson. Uh, at times. Uh, uh, favorites, uh, Ella Fitzgerald, yeah. uh, Johnny Mathis, uh, Take Six, uh, just just listening to them opened my ear so much. Uh, so much. Then, then once I stopped listening to gospel only, which was actually during, the, during shooting my first show with Steve, Steve Harvey, yeah. somehow I heard Jodeci. Okay. <laughs> all right. We ain't doing too bad. You know what I mean? I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of all, all over the place, Doc. Sure. Uh, 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 oh, man, there's, 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 there's a great many. There's a great many. Um, when Kim Burrell first came out, yes. uh, I heard even more than now, her then. Right. Yeah. In the beginning time, um, being that it was so, such a fresh and new sound, that had a lot to do with Luther. Uh, it's a that's a lot, and of course, I, he he's everybody. Stevie Wonder, right? Sure. Of course, he's everybody. He's right. he's 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 the it, period. Uh, but yeah, there's many Layla, yes, Rasan Patterson. Yeah. You know, um, these these are some some mighty folk. Sure. And so, they're they're and, and, and choirs forget about it. Of course, my own West Angeles. Right, you know, course, we, right. we got down and uh and you and I was part of that. Mass. Yes, uh, part of. Um, the Grammy nominated album. I wrote the mm -hmm. title track to that album mm -hmm. um, and also uh, co arranged the single and uh, sang lead on that called Lord Prepare Me. And so uh, 
we lo we love us some West A. I grew up learning to play and listening to West Angeles, never knowing that one day I'd right. be in sure. L.A. Right. And, and then wind up there. part of But when I was a kid, just learning to play, I was listening sure. to them right. in my room in Philadelphia. Sure. Great choir. So, you know, uh, the way the way uh, life circles around is unbelievable. It's many. Patti LaBelle, um, uh, the Bee Gees. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, kill it. Yeah, mm -hmm. the, the Bee Gees. Uh, even in, in some of those, like, you know, Flower Child groups. <laughs> right, you I know, like that. The Carpenters. Right. Sure, yes, yeah, Karen, of Fleetwood course. Mac, yes. you know. Sure, yeah. You know, they're so... It, it's it's right. just, it, it, we could we could go for right. a, a mighty long time, and then when I get in the car, I'm gonna be like, oh, how didn't I say? <laughs> right, right. And how didn't I, I didn't say? The you know what I mean? <laughs> right, 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 right. You know what I mean? Um, but you but you know what? There was everybody was on the Clark Sisters, mm -hmm. and of course they're the Clark Sisters. They're they're incredible. But I was on a group called Witness. Mm, yeah. I remember Witness. Yeah. You remember Witness? I, did, yeah. I was I was big on Witness. Oh yeah, of course yeah. Witness. Forget whining on that tip. Right. I mean, right, right, they were right. All day, B, B, and C, C, yes. Sure. And it was crazy that I, I remember laying in my bed as a kid, crying to B, B, and C, C, uh, like a bridge over troubled yes. water, well, because that that's you. what I listened to after my friend. We were jumping off roofs, mm. me and Doug, right. and him and like were. clipping his finger. And so I just right. gone to the hospital and, and sat with him. You know what I mean? Sure. Um, we were both as, just as dumb. He just clipped his sure. finger. Right. But uh, and I remember just laying in the bed and just crying at that. And one day. I would be in my dressing room as I'm doing The Color Purple on Broadway, mm. and B.B. Winans would be in my little dressing room next to me, right. playing me the new B.B. and C.C. that was about to come out. Wow. But Amazing. he could never understand what a moment that was for, for me, right. because I'm like, this is who that I, me. as a little kid, right. laid and cried to. Sure. Now this guy is sitting next to me wow. in my dressing room. Yeah. I mean, saying here's what me and CC are working on. Sure. I, mean, I can't listen. even get into I can't even get into <laughs> right. I'm not even I can't there. I can't even you won't you can't feel this like I feel <laughs> this. Just play the track. <laughs> but <laughs> but also in that same little oh, teeny dressing room, uh after listening to a, a record she did with Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis and going, golly, she's just ridiculous. And I'm I'm sitting there in my dressing room and I'm producing a song that she's singing on behind me. Now she doesn't know the song. So I'm just telling her how the song goes line by line. And I would just say, okay, it goes da da ba da ba da ba ba. And she was like, da 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 ba da ba. Like, next one. Da da ba da da ba da ba. And we're doing it. Like, well, she doesn't sound like her. But the lady whose breast is right above on top of my head right now, singing behind me, is Chaka Khan. Oh, no, stop. You know what I'm saying? And it's crazy. Wow. I, who, who would know who that, would you think? know? But it's just she and I sure. in this wow. little room. And I'm like, she's not a sound of her. This is her. Yes. You know? And yes. so, uh, Chaka, I mean, it's it's been so cool, and I got to to put some vocals together for Steve Easy Boy. Wow, Amazing. you know, and uh, know. and it's sitting in the back room over at West Angeles, which is for I think a, a Christmas uh, thing, and I had the singers. I was over the singers, and we were chilling. And somebody said, "Steve, he wants to talk to you." Like, they, 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 they're <laughs> talking to somebody. Else. Exactly. Hey, he wants, he wants to talk to you. You want to talk to me? <laughs> like, yeah, he wants to talk to you. So we went over. Sat down. Said, "Hey, Steve, how you doing?" Uh, hey, I'm thinking about doing, yeah, you know, <laughs> gospel project. I'm going to give you a call. <laughs> Ronnie. I got absolutely whatever. Sure, you know, right, all sure. good. And we did talk on the phone right. one time, you know right. what I mean? And right. he picked up the phone, what's up? I was like, look at this. <laughs> right. We ain't got to sing nothing. Because sure. right. he's that's on the phone. We're talking about what's up. That's good and he knew it was me. Sure. Right. He had that's the hookup where, you know, you, you know, right, you, can't, you ain't going to catch him. They got to announce your name. Yeah, exactly, right. And all before he picks up. Sure. So, you know. But I had some great moments. Lauren Hill. Amazing. You know, uh, you know, I used to tell her, you're a singer. So, she was. Sh I was shooting Sinbad, okay. and they were shooting Sister Act Two. Right. So the crew was me, her, and a great named Ryan Toby. He played the Muslim in that movie, and you also mm -hmm. learn from City High. And he mm -hmm. wrote one of Usher's big hits. Ryan's mm -hmm. the man. We were always be chilling, and uh, I'd never heard of a run, a vocal run, right, right. before. I was listening to the gospel and Luther and stuff, but Lauren and Ryan, we would sit in the laundry room at the Oakwood Apartments, which is where they were staying while they were right. shooting, sure. and they were just singing. Like what is that? They went, ooh, I'm like, what? What, <laughs> what is that? What called? is that? And they were like, yeah, it's just running along. They're actually the first ones mm. to to put me on to that. Right. Um, and I would tell her, 
man, you a singer. I told her mom, so what you tell her son? She talking about some rap group. <laughs> tell her, get, this, this is ridiculous. <laughs> this girl's a singer. She's clearly a singer. Mm -hmm. She can go on and be like, oh, you know, I'm going to get back, you know, think with my guys. She got a rap group. What <laughs> rap group? That's ridiculous. <laughs> right. This singer. And then the food just came out. I was like, yes. Oh, <laughs> that that rap group. Yeah. Got, got, got that you. could work. <laughs> right, and, right. And you then could. I wound up sitting behind her and Stevie at Curtis Mayfield's uh, memorial. Wow. And at this point, she's like a new god in music. And I'm just looking like, this is, <laughs> this is you, know, you know. I've got us doing skits together in the hallway wow. on VHS. Wow. You know what I mean? Amazing. It's amazing to see that stuff heard. Gabrielle Union. Yes. We were, we, we, we had, our trailers were so small during Seventh Heaven, sometimes we just share it. We just both be getting dressed. Uh -huh. And I remember she would say, you know, I'm just trying to be like you. I'm trying to be like you. And I always thought over the years, I'd love to run into her again and say, so you still trying to be like me? <laughs> right, right. Like, Not doing too bad. Right, right, right. Yeah, I think you're all right, Doc. <laughs> you know? So I've gotten the, uh, the chance to see people just shoot up right. and, and, and watch it happen. And it's glorious. It's amazing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, you know, Brandy. Yeah. I was like, this is, this is incredible. Yeah. And it's good being happy for some of their success. Like I said, it's taken 100%. directions you couldn't have predicted. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, it, you know, no one else's business is mine. Right. So no one's success is a reflection of either mine or, or my lack of in any area. Right. It's, that has nothing to do with me. So I could, I could be in one of these tents on Sunset Boulevard and and see my girl Brandy going down the street, and be like, "Yo, I'm so glad it ain't me." Right. You see what I'm sure, saying? So happy. It, it, right. it it has little, too 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 often. We we're so arrogant mm -hmm. and selfish, mm -hmm. even though we may not think of ourselves as that a lot, that we keep making everything about us. Right. It's like, what does he have to do with you? Right. So you can't be happy with for him because you think he's a reflection of you, right. and that. What what breaks he got has nothing to do with it. Sounds you. like you're trying to get right, into a you know, sermon. I know. That's what that that'll <laughs> preach. Sure. No, nah, you know. That's what we do in culture church. That's what we do. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. I get that from his. Exactly. He be just making breaks. He be like, you know, when you wear blue. He be like, what what was that? What just happened? <laughs> what was that? I get this every once in a while. I, you know what I'm saying? Sure. But I love yeah, it. so it has nothing to do with you. But it's it's been great to see them be fantastic and Absolutely. And move on. Sure. Know? The show's called Music and Medicine. When you hear those words, how do they speak to your heart? Really? How do they resonate with you? I thought it was a new hustler podcast. Y'all <laughs> hey. don't see this, y'all don't see this jacket? Hey. Y'all don't he got his Hugh Hefner on tonight. Somebody, somebody's Come on, not, Hugh. He's not here anymore. Somebody, right. gotta, somebody gotta take over. Exactly. So Don's gone. F's right. gone. It's your turn exactly. to go. Exactly. Let's go. <laughs> I think I feel a spirit coming on. I love it. <laughs> Every time. All right. Music and medicine. Sure. That's right. That's right. <laughs> right. That not that medicine, but yeah. <laughs> At least not on Saturday. Right. That's Marvin Gaye's song. <laughs> he <laughs> wanted a different kind of healing, huh? <laughs> <Exactly>. Huh? <laughs> but yes, what you want to ask me about sure. that? What does it mean to you when you hear those words? How does it resonate well, with Well, both. You? Both was perfect for me. That's, yeah. that's why it makes sense that I'm on your show, sure. because I'm all about music. Yes. I'm not as much about medicine. I'm about health, so we won't need the medicine. Ah, I love that. And so sure. so I, I love myself enough to take care of myself. Sure. Right. And that's what, what uh, I appreciate about you wanting to combine the two, because um, the ultimate message is love yourself enough yes. to be healthy. Right. Sure. Normally, we love ourselves so much we want the pleasure. So look, life is tough. You know what I'm saying? It's hard, man. I'm about to give me some Cheetos. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You know, and now she just left me. Right. That's. I need a whole right. table about what I'm about to eat. Right. Right. You know what I mean? Because I need something to make me feel good, right? Because yeah. the idea is I, I, I want to feel good. I want to treat myself. What do we normally say when something happens? Let's go treat ourselves. Right, yeah. exactly. But we go treat ourselves with what kills us. Right, exactly. So it's really not a treat. But the idea is I want to feel good. So another way of seeing it is I love myself so much that I won't do that to myself. Absolutely. You see what I mean? It's a different perspective. And one that helps, you know, exactly. along the way. Yeah. yeah. So Absolutely. that's how that's how I see it. What are some of those secrets that you do? Uh, the, the secrets I do is more about not only what you put in, but what you keep out. Yes. So uh, normally, uh, medicine is to help fix, either fix the issue or cover it up for now. Right. But if we get to the root of the problem, mm -hmm. then we don't have to worry about that. A lot of times you'll hear uh, a lot of older folks, senior citizens as we call them, who made juice or this is that and the other and they be like, I'm off all my medication. I ain't touched my this, this, that and the other. You know, because what they're doing now, they're putting in the nutrients exactly. 
you know, that helps them not need it. Right. So my, my trick, if you would, is I put in what's going to do good for me. Simple as that. And I make it taste good. Because just think about sure. it. We are like chicken, right? But, but uh, as, as I've heard Dr. Bobby Price even say, um, the, the, what we like is the seasoning. Right. The seasoning is normally the vegetable. The red pepper, yeah. the bell pepper, right. the crushed, you know what I mean? So, so, so you, you also can, I, I can, I could do a, a, a steak taco, but also could do a mushroom taco right. with a chipotle sauce, yeah, right. top it with some yeah, raw that's onions. That's mm, you see what I'm saying? That's, exactly. that's, that's, before but, I got here, Doc, these, that's why right. I feel and good right now. You, go. you understand right. what I'm saying? That's what I'm trying to tell you. That's what I'm trying to tell you. You know what I mean? I, I, uh, uh, um, almond milks and, and, and basically your, your nuts, your seeds, your vegetables. Yeah. But the, don't believe the lies that healthy food don't take. No, that's actually what tastes good. Right. You just got to make it good. If somebody fried chicken and the chick, fried chicken is nasty, you know it ain't because fried chicken tastes good. You know they just can't cook. Right. Right. It's <laughs> the same thing with healthy food. Like right. it, cook it, make it good. It's, it's like, like oh, this is no, they just can't cook. <laughs> Because if I make you a kale shake, you're going to go in. That's right. You know what I'm saying? I might get a proposal. You understand me? Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So that's the secret. You know what I'm saying? You know, right. Exactly. <laughs> it's the kale shake, Doc. Exactly. That's what's up. Uh, you know? I knew so we'd get it no, out of here. Man, Yeah, no. I, oh, man, I love, I love chefing, man. Sure. And, uh, you know, and, and help even if I do chicken, because I haven't had meat in 13 years. Mm. And recently, uh, speaking of, of gospel, me and, you, and, and, and one of your guests, Andre Washington, we recently mm -hmm. worked with Fred Hammond on a mm -hmm. play that he's working on. Mm -hmm. Well, I wanted to get, only had two weeks, and that's not a long enough time to get jacked. It's just not. The body doesn't, you know what I mean? Right. Even with steroids, you can't, <laughs> you know what I mean? Sure. And so I, I, I called a friend of mine, and I said, well, you know, what's clean eating you? He's a bodybuilder. And he said, the regular, you know, the chicken, and it is, and I said, but yeah, I can't, I can't, that, that, that chicken, I can't, I can't mess with that because it's so carcinogenic, mm -hmm. you know? One out of three people, not only in the country, but that I know, are dying of cancer. It's not a, it's not a, it's not a myth. Right, this is what's right. going on, right? right? I can't mess with that. I said, but what if there's a way? You know, I also had a Holy Ghost, so sometimes the Lord right. talked to me exactly. and tell me to do something ain't nobody else told me to do, exactly. and it'll work. <laughs> Gives you a message. So th right there, right that night, sure. right there, I went on and I found out that there is a healthier way to be able to have it. Mm. And it just it basically means the way our great grandparents used to have it. They had it fresh. They had it right. as it was, without all of the things right. poked in it right. and Injected. all of the carcinogens and all sure. of that stuff. Yeah. And so um, I actually started incorporating that. But I, I have organic air chilled mm -hmm. chicken. It has to be organic and air chilled. Right. And I'm knocking it out. Based better flavor because they had they haven't dipped it in in the water, you know, and all that stuff that they do after they kill the chicken and it right. takes out the flavor and it dampens the texture and all that stuff. It's actually better. You know what I mean? And I, I had that. Like I added that to my my thing. So I'm not so much about being part of a a fad or a, right. a what's your, they said what's your diet healthy. That's it. Right. right. You know what That's I mean? Cuz no vegan what. vegan don't mean healthy. Sure. You know what not I'm saying? Necessarily. Nah, 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 right. It's, sure. It can be a better way. Right. But like the commercial says, you know, beer is vegan. Right. Fries is vegan. Right, sure. Right, but you know what I'm saying? Exactly. I mean poop is vegan, but I ain't gonna eat that. <laughs> Let's hope not. You know, so I'm just saying. True. So yeah, so I I love myself and I encourage everybody else to see it that way. Love yourself enough to to, to take care of yourself. I love it. You know what I mean? One more time, where we can find you and where Yes, uh, social media, out. it's uh we already me and the audience joked earlier about my my, my uh, Instagram and exactly. all that exactly. handsome chats. <laughs> Handsome Chaz on IG. Um, I'm getting back on Facebook and those others, but really I'm an IG guy for now. Um, so Handsome Chaz on Chaz, it's C-H-A-Z. Sure. And uh, that's where I just show some of whatever I've done recently, here and there when I jump on. And also we'll be putting up the promo for The Sun Rose, as we spoke of earlier, uh, March 23rd. The Sun Rose on Sunset, my album release jam. Uh, and then the following week, it'll be another Chaz Shepard show. We have Grand Piano, we have horns, we have intimacy, we have a gorgeous room, uh, you know, good drinks, you know, and all of that stuff. We're and phenomenal have a music. Time. And phenomenal music. And the reason I can say that is I'm not just talking about me. It's sure. the folks that I'm up there with. These are some bad mm -hmm. <laughs> right. you exactly. know. Yeah, so that's a place for now that you can see me live. The Sun Rose starting March 23rd. Absolutely. We'll be there yep. if you're alive. And uh, you, you can't get on now. It's too late, but the Soul Train crews are sold out. I'll be on right. there. Sure. Uh, with some of our greats and uh, Dave Kaiser's cruise later on in the year. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks so much. Always a pleasure. Thanks so much. A pleasure, Doc. Sure, sure, sure. Thank you, man. Indeed. Indeed.